my name is Wing Chen, and this is my research project this summer. It's called the Design and Construction of the Nanopore Wind Tunnel. Um, I just was conducted at the Era Acoustic Flow Lab in Syracuse University with Dr. Mark Wells and Yuna Wang. And the main portion of this uh, presentation is to focus on the primarily the design and the construction. The facility is still being worked on. It should be done within the next two weeks or so. And by then, we'll start running tests and we'll have data and results by the next time I present. But for now, I'm going to focus on the design and construction of this anti wind tunnel. Our introduction. So a wind tunnel is a tool that you use to study airflow around objects that could be aircraft, cars, rockets, missiles, you name it, you put airflow around it, you can study how it behaves in air. Air motion and different types of um, airflow and speed and stuff. You can also track track information about the forces such as lift and drag. You'll be able to understand what kind of forces act on an aircraft that creates lift or how much drag you're going to have, and that leads into uh, performance factors such as how big of an engine you're going to need and all sorts of other stuff like that. You can also use uh, wind tunnels to study turbulence and airflows by looking for discontinuities. And you can also, the key point about the wind tunnel that helps you, the reason why the wind tunnel is such a great aerodynamic tool is because it allows the object that you're studying to remain fixed while you're moving air around it to simulate the aircraft in flight. For example, you, let's say you're, te you're testing out uh, aerodynamic features of an aircraft. One way would be to fly through 100 miles of airspace, or another way is to use it within a wind tunnel that's located inside a building. It's just much more space efficient and much you can collect better data. Now a little history about the wind tunnel. One of the earliest wind tunnels were made by the Wright brothers. It was a, uh, this is a replica actually, of the wind tunnel that they made. It's actually a rectangle shaped open-end wind tunnel. That basically means the air stuck into here through this pan, go through this wooden box that they designed and it just ejects it this way, and right here will be a test section. That's where this airflow air goes through. Now a little background about wind tunnels for today. There's a few types of airflow that you have to focus on when you design or you work on a wind tunnel. Those are subsonic flow, transonic flow, supersonic flow, hypersonic flow. Subsonic flow is just basically low speeds that are from either zero meter per second up to a couple hundred meters per second. Transonic flow will be the study of airflow in much higher speed, speeds that are similar or relative to the speed of moving aircraft. Supersonic flow will be speeds of Mach 1 or above. Mach 1 will be the speed of sound, and Mach 2 will be two times that, and so on. Hypersonic flow will be the study of airflow much, much faster than that, and we're talking about speeds that are like 25 knots and much higher than that. Those are only studied for re-entry vehicles such as the space shuttle coming back into uh, the atmosphere. So this is an example of a subsonic wind tunnel. That's actually the kind of uh, wind tunnel we're focusing on today. And it's a very simple one. This is an indoor one. And here's a transonic one that's a little bigger. And this is the supersonic wind tunnel here. It's actually, well, the subsonic and transonic both operate with fans primarily to move the airflow through. But in order to achieve supersonic speeds, you need to have compressed air in these tanks. And obviously, when you get hypersonic speeds, you can have higher pressure air. <clears throat> now, some of the basic components of a subsonic wind tunnel that we're going to be focusing on are, oh, we start off with an intake fan. And then we have a converging section, and then a diverging section. Then we have turning corner turning vanes. You'll see them right here. And you also have honeycomb filters, screen filters, contraction test section where you put your model and your diffuser and your fill stand. Now I've put two basic diagrams of two types of wind tunnels here. They're both subsonic, but the top one is what we call a closed loop and the bottom is an open loop. And I'll, I'll talk more in this next slide. Now a little background on anechoic chambers. So an anechoic chamber is a room that's filled with sound absorbing material that absorbs sounds and noise to prevent the reflection of sound waves. And you want to do that because if you're collecting data that are audio data and you want very clear, crisp audio uh, data, you don't want, I guess, an echo of the data that bounces back from the wall. So having 
having wedges like these on the corner, they absorb the material. These are called wedges, and basically break the flatness of the uh, wall, so it can prevent sound wave reflection and also increase surface area of the sound absorbers. Now, in this image you'll see here, this is actually a military application. It's a lot bigger than the facility we're using, and basically you could test a lot of things such as understanding what noises a, a tank makes. Obviously, a lot more, but you know. And also in this picture, it's that this picture is actually an image of the anechoic chamber used by Apple Computer. They're testing the iPhone 4, and it's a really effective way of uh, understanding audio effects along its surroundings. Now the goal of this project is to create an anechoic wind tunnel by modifying an anechoic chamber that is already existing. And this process, like I mentioned earlier, is going to contain a large portion of design as well as construction. But ultimately, in the future, this facility is used, it's going to be used to study wind energy. Right now, we're focusing on building it and getting it done so that it's working effectively. In the near future, as in maybe two, a month or two months from now, we're going to start testing it on uh, wind turbines and all sorts of other stuff. So for now, we're going to focus on the design and construction of this facility. Now here's the two images I talked about before. So basically the wind tunnel, the way it works is in an open loop tunnel, an open loop wind tunnel, you have the inlet here, and usually you could put a fan or you could not put a fan depending on what type of wind tunnel you're building. And you usually have a honeycomb and maybe a screen filter here. It's an anti turbulent screen. And you direct the airflow into this test section and that little thing right there, that will be your model. And that's the model you're studying the airflow around. Now, once the air goes past through there, it goes into a diffuser, which allows you to slow down the speed of the air until it gets to the fan, and that will move the air out and it's also to the uh, atmosphere. Now, the difference between an open loop wind tunnel and a closed loop wind tunnel is that this in this system, you have air coming in from the atmosphere, and then you go through the test section, and it goes back into the atmosphere. It's very simple, very cost effective, and very cheap. But sometimes you want to work with something like, you want to be able to control the heat inside the wind tunnel. You can't just you know, heat up the air and just let it go as a waste of energy. So what they might want to do is use a closed loop wind tunnel, where you just recycle the air past it over and over again. And now that's where turning mains and all sorts of other stuff comes in. So in this closed loop example, you have a test section here, then you have a diffuser, and you go into another, I think it's a fan, and then once you hit a corner, they use a turning vane, which basically redirects the airflow around the 90 degree angle, approximately 90, and then it goes around, you might have a contract, uh, contraction or a uh, converging section that allows you to either speed up the airflow or reduce the speed, and back around again to the filters, and back into the uh, test section. Now here's some of the materials that we used for this project. Obviously it's not all of it, but uh, covered most of it. And since it's a pretty uh, intensive construction project that we're working on with a deadline, we just used all sorts of materials. Some of them are not even on here. But some of the tools that we included were power drills, circular saw, jigsaw, or wheel saw, hammer, crowbar, lights, pneumatic nail gun, and compressor air tank, all sorts of other stuff like that. We have materials such as plywood, wood, uh, then acoustic insulation, siding, flashing, tar paper, nail screws, silicone, all sorts of stuff. It's all related to construction. Now, at the beginning of this summer, a lot of prelim preliminary design and construction work has already been completed on this project. This project has been ongoing for about two years, two and a half years maybe. So by the time we approach the summer, a lot of the progress that has been already made consisted of stuff like the foundation and some of the some parts of the tunnel and we have uh, this fan exhaust system in here. This is actually the exhaust fan. Uh, that's currently being used for a different experiment, but we modified it for our experiment or our facility. And uh, we want to continue this project by continuing to finish the design, direct the system, and then we want to finish the construction as well. Now the design of the anechoic wind tunnel the basic idea of this project is to take an existing anechoic chamber, which we already have, and we want to modify it so that it becomes a test section of the wind tunnel. And 
Earlier, I showed you a, di a diagram of the wind tunnel. The purpose of this anechoic chamber being used to be the test section is that it'll absorb all the sounds that are being made by the airflow in progress or by any of the design I've come up with. Now, this is done by building the wind tunnel externally outside the building. And then we wrap the path of the opening where you would normally have a test section. We will place it right on the outside of the anechoic chamber, pushing the cut hole and make sure everything is off and everything. Now, this will yield a facility that can help you study acoustics and average wind conditions and velocities. The reason I say average wind conditions and velocities is because we're aiming for about 10 to 15 meters per second. That's supposed to be uh, similar to average wind conditions. That will help you study stuff like wind turbines and all sorts of other green energy systems. The overall procedure is, well, we have multiple sub-projects. Obviously, it's a huge project, so we divide it up into the little tasks here and there. And by doing that, it helps us delegate the task effectively. And over the course of the summer, we're able to distribute the workload efficiently. And now that we have different tasks, and we have a few students, about three or four other students, we're able to alternate these students, and by alternating us, we're able to work on different tasks at different times, and we all had a good amount of exposure to each part of the field. Now, the air delivery system. In order to supply the airflow entering the wind tunnel, we chose to modify the existing HVAC, that would be heating ventilation air conditioning unit of the anechoic facility. Uh, most modern buildings have an HVAC unit. An HVAC unit is basically something that supplies your building with air conditioning or heating. In this case, we use the HVAC unit on our anechoic facility to be our supply of uh, airflow. By using this HVAC unit to deliver the air supply, it allows us to monitor and control the airflow as well as the temperature of the air. Uh, like I mentioned just now, that HVAC unit controls air conditioning and also heating, where we will be able to control the temperature of our air as well. And to do so, we would have to cut a hole in the wall to redirect the airflow from the HVAC unit that's on the roof of the building, of the anechoic building, through the room into the opening of the wind tunnel. I'll show you just in a second. This was done by removing the current ventilator structure and placing it with a 90 degree elbow duct. You'll see here that this is our original system. This is the wall that we need to uh, drive the airflow through. And this is the original system that we had. It's sort of like a metal box that allows you to distribute the air evenly, I suppose. And on the other side of this wall, actually, is this, it's outside. This is the external part of the building. This is something that they've been working on for the last year or so, and I've been focusing on this this summer as well. Now, what we want to do is, Take this, remove it, and replace it with this. That way, it can redirect the airflow in, so that it goes through this wall and into this tunnel. So after hours of demolition and cleaning up, we were able to remove a square section of the wall to create an opening. Now, by demolition, we start cutting off the drywall, and then once we expose all the the low bearing beams underneath the low bearing column, we supported it with a a uh, four by four and a jack post to sustain the weight while we remove this material. Once we remove the material, we're able to cut a hole and this opening in the back is the opening of this side. 